the Islamic, Islamic Center, Center of, of Tennessee, Tennessee presents. Present. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بهم يعدلون هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده ثم أنتم تمترون وهو الله في السماوات وفي الأرض يعلم سركم وجهركم ويعلم ما تكتبون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له بذكره تطمئن القلوب وبرحمته تغفر الذنوب وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه ترك لنا المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذني الله وإياكم My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam we hear a lot of discussion, a lot of conversation, especially lately, about the status of the woman in Islam. It is a time that we clear the fog and we uncover the veil and we say clearly what Islam says about the woman and how Islam honored the woman. We see a lot of discussions. Sometimes when we read some of these discussions, I say this is not Islam. This is not the Islam that I have studied. It's a different Islam that they're talking about. But Islam is a clear, crystal clear. There is no doubt in Islam how Islam honored the woman. And you would see in my khutbah, inshallah, how Islam liberated the woman from the darkness that they were, from the humiliation that the ancient civilization put them, and the way the light that Islam had given to them. How can a religion whose first follower was a woman, Khadija, discriminate against a woman? How can a religion whose first person who give ultimate sacrifice to that religion as a martyr was a woman, which is Sumayya Ummu Ammara? How can Islam dishonor a woman when he designated a special chapter in the Quran? the fourth chapter in the Quran named after a woman, where you will not see a chapter called the man. How can Islam dishonor or disrespect a woman when 19th chapter of the Quran named after a woman, a noble woman, Mary, and it was mentioned her name in the Quran 34 times in the Quran. How can Islam dishonor a woman when the fifth pillar of Islam, there is, which is the Hajj, there is a pillar in that Hajj, which is Safa wal Marwa, to walk between Safa and Marwa is a following a footstep of a woman, which is Hajar, the mother of Ismail alayhi salam. In the Quran, in the book of Islam, there is an ayah where Allah had made extract example to the entire believers, men and women, to a woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made an example, instructed a woman for the entire believers, men and women, for, to a woman which is Imra'at Fir'aun, so that they could follow her footstep. Umar ibn al-Khattab said that, Kunna la nu'iddu nisa'a shay'an hatta nazala ma nazala bihinna min al-Qur'an. Before the Qur'an revealed, we used not to consider the woman anything until the Qur'an revealed and he spoke about the woman and honored the woman a way that no one else in the history past honored the woman. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, in the Quran Allah reminds us the ni'mah that he had given us, especially when we perform one of the pillars. Allah says, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتِ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ 
Whenever you flow down from the Arafat, from the place of Arafat, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Mash'al al-Haram, in the mosque of al-Haram. Then remember the way he had guided you. Before the Islam, you were not guided. Before the Islam, the humanity, they were in a very, very dark stage. You will see from the examples from the ancient, even look at the way that they viewed, not even they treated, the way they viewed the woman. And after Islam came, and the way Islam viewed the woman. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam came out with a revolution. Not only against the Arabs at that time, those who used to consider women sub citizen but also came revolution against the entire humanity, against the entire world at that time where they used to dehumanize the woman. Let us go back to the history so we understand how Islam honored the woman, how Islam gave the woman their fully right. In the ancient Greek, in the ancient Greek civilization, in their culture, in their books, you will find this. They used to consider shajaratun masuma. They used to consider a woman a, 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 a poison tree. That anyone who eats any bird that eats from that tree will die. And they used to say, waqalu hiya rijsun min amal shaytan. I'll be honest, I'm just not sugarcoating, I'm just quoting from the history that they put, not adding or removing anything from it. Although some of the types to say it even, it does not sound good. So they say, They used to consider women as a filthy and made up by Satan. By Satan. And in their books you will find, The woman can be sold and bought as any other merchandise. She will be considered as a property. In ancient Romans, this is what they used to say. They used to say that the woman does not have a ruh at all. She, she doesn't have a soul at all. And they used to torture the women and boil water on them, hot water on them. And they used to drag the women until they die on the horses. In ancient Chinese civilizations, this is what they used to say, Miyahun Mu'lima is a painful water that washes the happiness from the man. And they used to have, وَلِصِّينِيِّ الْحَقْ أَنْ يَدْفِنَ زَوْجَةَ the Chinese man had a right to bury his wife alive whenever he want to do so. And whenever he dies, his family can inherit her as a property. In ancient Hindu civilization, this is in their culture, they used to say that the woman does not have a right to live after her husband's death. And she needs to be burned with her husband. Even in some cities, in some, not cities, some villages, now you will see some women jumping into the fire after her husbands die because still they have some backgrounds of that darkness life of the state that they live. In some of the books, you will see that the woman does not have a right even to read, does not have a right even to read their books because they consider it as dirty. There was a conference. 586 was held in France. This was right after the Prophet ﷺ was born. So they hold in that and they were debating. They were debating whether the woman would be considered as a human being or not. Also, they had a debate whether the woman has a soul or not. They said that if she has a soul, what type of soul? Man who soul, or human being soul, or animal soul. And they come and they debated and they concluded that yes, she's a woman, but she's only, and she, she, she yes, she's a human being, and she's only was created to serve the man only. This was 586 AD. Also in the parliament of England, in the time of Henry VIII, they came with a conclusion, a decision that they banned the woman reading from the Old Testament of the Bible because they considered her as impure. And Arabs in the time of Islam, they used to 
hate the women. They used to burn them alive or bury them alive. But Islam came and said no to all of that. And it started liberating the women. In 15th century, the Islam was accused to, dis to give much rights to the woman more than anyone else. From the beginning of the creation of the Adam, Islam is very clear that Allah was removed, Allah removed the Jannah from Adam and Hawa because of the sin that they commit both. Islam does not blame only Hawa as other books. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَنَسِيَ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمَ we, have, we take a covenant with Adam alayhi salam, he is the one who forgot. And Islam says, وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ Adam is the one who disobeyed Allah. In other books, you will find that Hawa put the Adam into the sin that they committed. In Islam, they both committed the sin and they both found guilty and they both repented to Allah and Allah had accepted from them and case closed. Before the Islam, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the woman was not considered even as a human being. She was considered as a property. And Islam came and said, And he sa Islam says, the woman has a right similar to the man in a rightless way. And Islam came and said, Live with the woman in a kindness way. Islam came and said, Whoever is rich, let them spend on his woman as much as he can. If you are broke, if you are poor, spend as whatever you can. Islam came and said, After it was refused to be given inheritance, Islam said they have a right to inherit. They are human beings. They have the same right as man and they can inherit. And Islam came and said, after it was considered as a property, Islam came and said, And the woman has a share for what they earn. They can work, they can earn, they're not a property, they are a full human being and has the same right as anyone else. And Islam came and said, not only they can earn, and commanded the man to spend on them. And Allah said, Give them from the world that Allah had given to you. Islam came and said, They are, you are a garment for them. You are protection for them. You protect them, O man. And Islam came and liberated the woman away. No one, no one, no civilization before Islam had liberated. If you go back to before Islam, only if you look at the history of Arabs at that time, they used to hate the woman. They used to bury her alive. In the Quran, it's explicit on that. Islam says, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنثَى ضَلَّ وَجُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ When one of them is given a glad tiding for a baby, a baby girl that was born to him, ضَلَّ وَجُهُ مُسْوَدًّا His face becomes dark. وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ وَهُوَ حَزِينٌ Why he was very sorrow. يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءٍ he will hide from the people because of the news that he had got, because of the baby girl that was born to him. And Islam said clearly after that, يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورُ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا Islam says, Allah is the one who gives, Allah is the one who creates, whomever he wants, he gives them boys. Whomever he wants, he gives them girls, and whomever he wants, he makes them. There is no difference between men and women except at taqwa. Salam came and said, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. O mankind, we have created you from a, uh, from a man and woman, from a male and female. Wa ja'alnakum shu'uba. And we make you from different backgrounds. The noblest person among you is the person who have a taqwa, God feeling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam had came after all oppression, after all dehumanizing that the woman faced and said they all same if they all good do, do good things. Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha Whoever do a right to think from a man and woman فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا It doesn't matter whether a gender issue is not an issue in Islam. Both of them, Allah would make them live a writer's life in this dunya and a writer's life and after here. And Allah said, فَسَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ 
أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر وأنثى. الله will not lose the amal the deeds that you guys do, male or female. Allah did not differentiate that, and they were all equal in front of Allah. In Islam, Islam was Allah had given the rights of the women. They didn't have to fight for their rights in Islam. In other civilizations, they have to fight their rights, rights to vote, rights to own, and all of that they have to fight for it. But in Islam, whenever the Islam came, it removed them from the darkness of the Jahiliyyah to the darkness of Islam. Some of the examples that the way they used to treat the women before Islam is that whenever a woman and her husband has a dispute and get disagreement, she goes back to her wali, to her father or her brothers. They will refuse to return her back to her house. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came with a revelation saying that the woman has a right to go back to her husband if they want. The woman has a right to marry whomever she wants. Allah says, وَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءِ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنْ فَلَا تَعْطُلُهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنْ إِذَا تَرَاضَوْا بِيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ When a woman is divorced with one talqa and there is two talqa remained, do not stop them, do not prohibit them to come back to their husband if they agreed so. If they want to come together back, let them go back together. One of the ways that they used to oppress the woman before Islam is that whenever a man marries a woman and he does not like her, he used to harm her, he used to abuse her so that she can ask for the divorce and he can get back so she can ransom herself from that marriage. And Islam came and said no to that. And Allah says, وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَن تَأْخُذُ مِمَّا آتَيْتُمُهُنَّ شَيَّا Whatever you give them, the dowry that you give them, you do not have a right to take it back. You cannot harm them, you cannot oppress them, you cannot abuse them. They have a right if you cannot live with her, you can let her go without you harming her. Islam had honored the woman a way that no risala, no constitution had honored before. One of the ways of bulm or oppression that used to oppress the woman before Islam is that whenever the woman, her husband dies, they used to inherit her like a property. Her brother, the man's brother or the, the man's cousins will throw clothes on her. They will poke her. She does not have a say whether she wants or not. They will inherit her like a property. Then they will marry to anyone they want or they will keep her without marriage forever. And Islam came and said no to that. Islam said, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu, la yahillu lakum an tarithu nisa'a karaha. Oh, who you believe? You cannot inherit the women. They are not a property. They are free as anyone else. وَلَا تَعْقُلُوهُنَّ لِتَذْهَبُوا بِبَعْضِ مَا آتَيْتُمُونَ And do not take anything from them. Not only they free, they are free to marry whomever they want. No one can force the woman to marry to anybody they don't like. The Prophet ﷺ was clear to that. He said, لا تنكح المرأة حتى تستأذن. A woman cannot be, mar cannot be married to anyone until she's asked the permission for it. If she is bikr, you will seek a permission from her. If she is not a bikr, if she is not a virgin, then still you have to get her command to ask you to marry her to anyone else. أقول ما تسمعون استغفر الله لي ولكم. الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيب قلبي ونور قلبي أشهد أنك قد بلغت الرسالة وأديت الأمانة ونصحت للأمة فكشفت الغمة وجاهدت في الله حق جهاده حتى أتتك اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلام عليه فاتقوا الله يا عباد الله فإني أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam That was a way that they used to oppress the women before the Islam But let us see how Islam liberated How the Islam viewed the women after Islam A man came to the Messenger of Allah and he said, 
O Messenger of Allah, before Islam, I buried 12 women alive. That was before Islam. Then the Messenger of Allah was mad. And he said, Man la yurham, la yurham. He said, whoever does not show mercy to the woman, especially the case we're talking about the woman, whoever does not show mercy to the woman, Allah does not show mercy to him. And the Messenger of Allah said, Man kanat lahu untha, falam yu'diha. Whomever Allah give him a girl, a woman, and does not harm her, does not humiliate her, does not bury her alive as they used to do, Allah will grant him a Jannah. The Messenger of Allah came and said, Man ala jariyatayni hatta tablugha. Whoever take cares of two girls until they reach the age of puberty, jaa yawm al qiyamati wa huwa kahatayn. He says the day of judgment, he will come with, in the day of judgment, me and him will be the same in Al-Jannah. He will be granted the highest level of Jannah. The man they accuse his religion, oppressing the woman, says, The person who walks and runs and, and gets something for the armala, a divorced woman, for a miskin, is like a person who is struggling for the sake of Allah. Is like Kalqaim al la yaftur. Is a person that who stands up for Qiyam all night does not sit down. Like a person who is fasting all day does not break his fast. And also, the Messenger of Allah used to urge his companions. Before he died, he had advised Khutbatil Wadah. He did not forget about them. He advised the men to treat the women right to his and he said, I advise you treat, to treat the woman good. Even in his bad death, he did not forget to advise, to tell, to clarify that the woman has to be respected and has to be honored. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam had given a right for both men and women. No one can cross his limits. Every Islam had given a right and obligation to the man as well as the woman. Every woman has an obligation and every woman has a right. And a woman should be honored in a short form in Islam. When the woman is a mother, Islam says that the Jannah is under her feet. The Jannah is under her feet. The man came and asked the Messenger of Allah to go to the jihad. He said, فَلْزَمْ قَدَمَيْهَا فَثَمَّ الْجَنَّةِ When she is a wife, the Messenger of Allah said that she completes half of the religion for her husband. When she's a daughter, Islam says in the hadith, have you seen that she will open gates of Al-Jannah for her take cares, for take care cares. So there's a lot to be said about this topic. There's a lot and a lot in the background, the history and how the Islam was treated in women. In a short form, as you have seen, Islam had just came to remove the entire mankind, man and woman from the darkness of the jahiliyyah, from the ignorance that they were living to the light of Islam. My beloved brothers and sisters, remember to send salutation upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat, wal mu'minin wal mu'minat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat, rahamna bi rahmatin tughnina biha amman siwaak. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر عبادك المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اتباعه وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا اللهم اجعل الجنة الفردوس هي دارنا وقرارنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم